We'll continue today in our Wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast uh, at looking at the Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're thinking about the biblical worldview that we should have as Christians. And if we're going to have a view of the world that is scriptural, that is in line with God, what God thinks of it, we have to understand his church. He, he invented the church. He created the church. He, he is the head of the body of Christ, of Christ is the head of his own body. He has formed us the way he wants to form us. It is God's design and God's will that the local body of, of Christians function uh, underneath his headship. And so we have to see what does a church do? We, we've already looked at what the church is, who it is. We've looked at, at it, its outreach in the way of evangelism as we have this crooked and perverse generation around us. In other words, the world is enveloped in sin and, and corruption. And as we have looked at that, we see that the church is to reach out to be that lighthouse that draws people to Jesus Christ to tell them about the great gospel of the Lord. But what does the church do when it gathers? I think the church often makes a mistake of thinking that, that we come together to evangelize people as they come in the doors. That doesn't mean that uh, we shouldn't give the gospel, and we in our church often do uh, give the gospel, probably in most services, the, uh, at least a piece of the gospel is there, sometimes more than others. But the primary purpose of the church coming together as a body of Christ is not evangelism. That is to be done out in the world where people need Christ. Uh, the primary purpose of the church is to edify the believers. We see uh, how that functions very early in the very first church, Acts 2.42. And I think I've gone through some of this recently with you already, but it's, it's really good to review this great verse of Scripture. It says, as, as they came together after they were saved, about 3,000 of them in Acts 2.41. He says that they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayers. And so we find the church coming together for some specific re reasons and purposes to help build up the body of Christ. First of all, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. Now that means that the apostles were now teaching not only the Old Testament scriptures, which they did, and uh, not only... Um, the uh, teachings of Jesus, which they are now giving uh, the things Jesus taught them when he was on earth, some of which we find in the Gospels and others not, but also what was being revealed to them now through the Holy Spirit. And so these divine revelations that God gave his apostles is what the early church focused on. They were being taught the apostles' teachings so that they might be the kind of people God wanted them to be. Secondly, we find that they devoted themselves to fellowship. The Greek word there is koinia, which simply means a, so having something in common. Uh, the people of God have something in common, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're part of the one body of Christ. We are his people. And so we have him in common, and we come together to fellowship around the commonness of Jesus Christ, the, the centrality of Jesus Christ. And because we have him in common, uh, our fellowship is wrapped around him. And although we come from many diverse backgrounds and ethnicities and, and ideas and work relationships and all these kinds of things, even though that's true, we find that uh, we can fellowship around the common bond of Jesus Christ. Uh, thirdly, they, they, they were breaking bread. And that almost certainly is uh, speaking of the Lord's Supper, because the Lord's Supper does remind us every time we partake of it that we're here because of Jesus Christ, that everything we do, everything we believe is all wrapped around the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Lord's Supper is that continual reminder of that. And the body of Christ comes together uh, periodically, some churches every week take the Lord's Supper, some once a quarter, some once a month. Uh, but every time we take it together, we are reminding one another of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and what he's going to do for us uh, uh, when he comes again. And then finally, they were devoted to prayers. And so we have a praying community. When we pray, we are recognizing our own inadequacies. Uh, prayer is, is, is basically saying, look, we depend on God. Uh, in and of ourselves, we have no power, no ability to really accomplish the things that matter uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are totally dependent upon Him. And our prayers to Him, our petitions to Him, and our worship of Him in prayer, and our confession of sin in prayer is, is a very, very vital part 
not only of our individual Christian life, but also of our corporate life as the body of Christ. And so when we come together, we pray publicly uh, together and uh, we pray in various settings together because we are a body of Christ that is devoted to prayer. So these are some of the things that the early church did uh, when they come together and it's what we are continuing to do today. We'll finish up our discussion of uh, the church in this biblical worldview study uh, tomorrow. I hope you can join us. 